Jesus, how can I know I'm saved? All right, these things write we unto you. What did he write? Let me give you a few things he wrote. He wrote in John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He wrote that. All right, dear Jesus, I'm believing on Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me. I believe it's the cross. He suffered my hell and paid my debt. I believe that. I'm trusting Jesus as my Savior. All right, in writing, you believe on the Son. You have everlasting life. I know I have it because he wrote it in the Bible and said so. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, or I call on him. He said, if I call, I'm saved. I know I'm saved because he said so and put it right here in writing. All right? John 3, 3, 16, That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He wrote it. You believe on him, you have everlasting life, you'll never perish. I know I'm saved because of what he wrote. These things write we unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have everlasting life. If you doubt your salvation at this moment, there are only two things that you can doubt. You either doubt that you are trusting him or you doubt that he meant what he said, one or the other. You can't doubt anything else. I led a lady to Christ. She was over 60 years old, near 70, I guess. I, I'll never forget it. And I had the most difficult time leading her to the assurance of salvation. After she had prayed and said, all right, I will trust Jesus Christ as Savior, then I said to her, now then, Mrs. Uh, so-and-so, if you died today, would you go to heaven? She said, I hope so. Listen. I said, hope? Yeah, she said, I hope I will. I said, that means you have some doubt. She said, that's right. I said, now listen, I'm not going to leave until we get it settled because I'm here to help you. I said, there's only two things you can doubt. You either doubt that you're trusting him completely for your salvation or you doubt that he meant what he said. Now, which one do you doubt? She said, well, I don't doubt that he meant what he said. I, I don't believe God would lie about it, especially put it there in the Bible in writing for everybody to read. I don't believe God would lie. He said I had everlasting life. I said, well, there's only one thing left you can be doubting. I said, you're trusting him. And I said, you prayed a minute ago and told him you would trust him. And you'd depend on him to get you to heaven. Now, did you mean it? She said, I meant it. I said, are you completely relying on him to get you to heaven? She said, I'm completely depending on him to get me to heaven. I said, you don't have any doubts about that? She said, I don't have any doubts about that. I said, well, I said, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You don't doubt you believe him. You don't doubt he meant what he said. Now, show me what else you can be doubting. She went and smiled. She said, I see it. If I don't doubt that I'm trusting him and, and I don't doubt that he meant what he said and he said I had everlasting life, she said, I have to have everlasting life. He said it in the Bible. It has to be true. And she began to smile. She said, you know, I have everlasting life. And she said, I would go to heaven if I were to die and there's no doubt about it and I know I'm saved. Why do you know you're saved? Because God Almighty said so right here in the Bible. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. I said, now when that verse ceases to be true, you might be lost. But as long as that verse is true, you're saved. She saw it. I had rather have what this Bible says, and I'll be through. I had rather have what this Bible says for the assurance of my salvation than to have every angel in heaven come down from heaven, tell me I'm saved. Gabriel come down. We all say... Well, I say, Gabe, glad to have you here today. Anything you want to tell us? Yeah, he said, Dr. Hudson, I want to talk to you. Oh. What do you want to tell us? Dr. Hudson, I want to tell you that you're saved, and you have everlasting life, and when you die, you're going to heaven. Well, I say, now, Gabriel, I'm glad you came. That's a long trip for you to make. And I appreciate you coming. But you know you didn't need to come. As a matter of fact, I got something better than your testimony. Oh, I'm an angel, I know. I know you're an angel. But there's a group of angels messed up. They're reserved and everlasting chains of darkness of the great day. <laughs> they kept not their first estate but left their own habitation. Can't always trust angels, Gabe. <laughs> well, I'm going to get upset. Don't lose your temper. So here comes Michael. Michael says, I came all the way to heaven to tell you you're saved. I said, Mike, you shouldn't have done that. I'm glad you came. We'll have breakfast together, fellowship together, but 
<laughs> you need not come all the way down here and tell me I'm saved. Well, I'm talking about that, man. Don't lose your temper. I got something better than your testimony. But what have you got? I got God Almighty's Word in writing. I'd rather have this in the tape recording. Of God's voice on a tape recording, I'd play it in the cassette tape. Curtis, you're saved. <laughs> I, I'd always think some nut had put that on a tape recorder. I'd rather have this and have, have him call me up on the telephone. If he called me up on the telephone tonight and said, This is God. I want to tell you about I wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't either. You'd think some nut had called you. You never you never believe it was God. I'd rather have this in a telephone call from heaven. I'd rather have this and have the angels come tell me I'm saved. I'm going to hang on to this. Boy, I like it. Why I'd rather have this? Because it's what he gave me. These things right we unto you that you may know. That's why I want to hang on to this. I want to hang on to what he gave me. And for you to say, I hope I'm saved, when you know you're trusting Jesus Christ, what you're really saying is, I, I hope God told the truth. You're implying that God could lie if you don't raise your hand and you're sure you're saved. When folks ask you if you die, do you know you're going to heaven? And you know you're trusting him. Not to raise your hand is, is saying, well, maybe God lied about it. No, if I say you say, yes, sir. I'm more sure that I'm saved than I am that I'm alive. I'm more sure that I'm saved than I am that I'm married. I'm more sure that I'm saved than I am that I'm on this platform. Why? I have better assurance for it. I have God Almighty's written word that has not changed in thousands of years, and heaven and earth shall pass away, but this will never pass away. Boy, you latch onto this and hang on to it. And, and when everybody in town says, you're not saved, you just go to that old emotional church and that old loud preacher hall and tell you you're saved, you, he just told you a false bill of goods. Down in your heart, you say, no, not the loud preaching. God's Word. I'll hang on to this.